Hi and welcome to you all. Uh, my name is John Cherry. Um, I currently work in the engineering department at Swansea University. My current role is a research officer and I'm working on a Pan Wales project which is European funded and it's been running for about four years called Astute, which is Advanced Sustainable Manufacturing Technology. The aim of that project is to go around to companies and help them out carry out the research they can't do in-house. So they get the whole university open to them, no money changes hands, and they get the expertise within the university. During this project, a couple of years ago, we decided that uh, a very good um, machine to buy or something to actually invest in was to invest in an SLM machine in working additive manufacturing so we can actually help some of the companies in Wales use it as a resource for that. Um, so we invested in AM, Renishaw AM250 and we've now been using that to help companies. Now, normally people from university will come along here and say how brilliant we are at collaborating with industry, how brilliant our research is, but I'm not here today to talk to you about that. But I'm going to give you a brief outline of what we're actually carrying out at Swansea University. We have several, several aims. We have our industrial plans and we have our, obviously, fundamental research plans. Within Wales, we actually have a, a very nice broad range of metal powder producers and we also have the aerospace industry. So we thought we'd get an additive layer manuf manufacturing machine in so that we can actually bring the whole supply chain together within Wales. We can look at the developing of the powders and then look at the components that we actually get at the end. So we're working with our industry. But we also want to actually look at the fundamentals ourselves. We actually want to develop alloys for the actual process itself. That's what we actually started to look at in the fundamentals. We have a very strong materials research centre, so we actually got all the equipment that we need to actually develop these materials and, and, and get that moving forwards. We also have a very strong computational side, and one of the aims within the university, not actually within my stream, but is to actually look at the process itself and computationally model the process, look at the actual models for the deposition of the powder, look at how the powder melts, and then also move on to actually looking at prop property prediction directly from the, from the model itself without actually having to run the machine. This will be specifically useful if we're actually looking at new alloys. We're also looking at implementing new powder characterization and testing processes. Uh, we've invested heavily in an FT4 powderometer and looking at how the powder char characteristics in the unmelted powder actually work within the machine. And then we're also looking, along shore with some of our industrial partners as well, at looking at developing process control algorithms for the machine. So what we actually want to do in the overall is to make Swansea into UK le leading research centre for additive manufacturing. And we've come more from the downstream with the powders rather than the upstream looking at creating parts. We're quite late entry into the uh, additive manufacturing uh, field, but we've, we've made good legs and in the two years we've actually had very good progress. However, I'm not here to talk to you today about that. I'm going to talk to you about the other side of universities that a lot of people sometimes forget. We teach. We teach students. We teach engineers. The future engineers are the people that will be going into the companies, will be going into the companies who make the machines, going into the companies where additive manufacture can actually be used. And it's these people that we need to drive the additive manufacturing uh, process forward. How many of you here within an uh, owner company, you've employed people who already know the ins and outs, especially undergrads or people who just graduated, actually know about additive manufacturing? Many of you? So what we want to do is we want to implement our research into the teaching. So we have the process. We have a wonderful process, whether it's SLM or it could be applied to any other additive manufacturing process. We have extreme excitement in this. I get students coming to me saying, oh, here we've got a metal, metal 3D printing machine. And they're really excited. They come running up. But that excitement is a bit offset because they still see it as something from Star Trek. They still, what they see is what they see on the BBC News. Someone made a gun out of 3D printing. We need to get them to step away and say, no, well, if I go into a company, I can actually think about using additive layer manufacture for making a component that will actually work. We need to get them to look at additive manufacture as a mainstream manufacturing process. We need to educate them. So what we're doing at Swansea University is we're starting to incorporate additive manufacture into our undergraduate and postgraduate teaching and learning. So what we have, briefly, is we have additive manufacturing as a process. 
And here are just some brief outlines. This is a, this is a newly developing process. We look at materials. We have materials courses. Previously on our materials courses, we've looked at cold isotic pressings, looking at powders. Why don't we swap that round and make it into additive manufacturing? We have materials, we have the input materials, we have the output materials from this box which will create the parts. We have the process itself. A lot of people don't even understand how the process itself works. The melting of powders, how those powders are built up, how the melting and the CAD actually gets into the machine. How we actually control the process. A lot of us, uh, with the research we're doing, we're still looking at ways of actually finding out the fundamentals within the process itself. Computationally, instead of focus, focusing on uh, such things such as discrete element models of, of powder compaction and powder filling and hopper flowing, let's look at computationally, let's look at it as additive manufacturing. FEA, look at topological optimization of FEA. And also the big, big genre of design the free-form design you get with AM. We're not here, we're not bound by casting or forging or by CNC, so we can incorporate all this into manufacturing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through briefly how we actually start teaching this. As you can see here, we have some very nice images. We have a real full-time image, and at the top you can see we have the SLM process at 10,000 frames per second. So you can actually start to see what's actually going on in the process. So what are we going to teach our students? How are we going to get them interested in this and actually understand? We need to teach them how uh, SLM actually works. We need to teach them about how the laser power gets into the powder bed. We need to teach them that we can change that by changing the exposure time. We can change process variables such as the laser power, the hatch spacing, the line speed. And we also need to say, this is what we can do with AM. This is how you compare it to your traditional manufacturing processes, such as your castings and your forgings. At, at, at present, we, in our manufacturing processes, we teach castings, forging, CNC, injection molding. We don't teach additive manufacturing. So we're starting to introduce that into, into it. The other thing we can look at is if we look at a more traditional subject, such as thermodynamics within teaching mechanical engineering or any, any engineering subject, we can actually look at the process as a thermodynamic process. We have a heat flux going into a material. We have dissipation of that material. We have heat losses through that material. So we can start teaching the actual fundamentals of thermodynamics through the process itself. We also look at process control. Within, within all, our, all our courses, we'll always try to give them a briefing on how we data log, how we record temperatures, how we optically uh, look at processes. With the AM process, we start to introduce some more complexities. When we're looking at exposure times of a laser on a powder bed of microseconds, we now need to in in incorporate into the teaching of how complex that is to data log. The reaction of a thermocouple in microseconds is nowhere near what they're used to looking at casting or forging. So we need to actually educate them in the process to say what's going on. And we're doing that through looking at the process control. Design of experiment. Within Swansea University, we, uh, with our research, with our materials development, we always look at using orthogonal arrays to develop our materials. It's a nice way you don't have to change one, one aspect at a time, one parameter at a time, and we can basically map the whole thing maybe in about nine experiments. During my time at university, I was taught uh, design of experiment and orthogonal arrays through injection molding of chocolate uh, bunny rabbits. Now, as fun as it might have seen at the time, it probably wasn't actually that exciting. But if we can take our research and put that into the teaching of how we look at changing process parameters to get optimum density in our parts, once again we're introducing the students to selective laser melting and additive manufacturing. So then we have move on to the design. Now this design was actually taken from last year. We, it was one of the first courses we did. We had an undergraduate uh, who was part of the formerly student. And we asked him to go away and design an intercooler that could actually fit on the race car. This year, we didn't actually fit it onto the race car, but you can see the original intercooler at the top. It was made out of aluminium, needed uh, um, soldering, 
um, need lots and lots of processes to get that together, quite complex. And we said, well, go away, try and design a different intercooler, and then come up with a way of actually testing it. So he went away and he put different meshes into the intercooler of different uh, densities. And then he said, well, how do I test it? We said, well, that's for you to find out. And slowly he was being introduced to how you design an experiment, how you design for AM, and how to incorporate a additive manufacturing into something that they would traditionally do. So he went away and designed this uh, test rig so he could test how the uh, temperature transfer through the intercooler went. And he found that some of the parts made by AM actually had a vast improvement over the traditional, traditional method. So the aim for that was then next year we're actually going to take the part, get the whole of the formula student to actually design it full scale, and just to make them take away the shackles of design completely and see what they can come up with for the design for the intercooler. Materials is a very big subject, and in materials engineering we, we, we teach a lot of it. A lot of the time with metals, the students themselves don't really know where the metal comes from. So with additive manufacturing, we have our upstream producers, we have those gas atomization producers who produce the powder that we need for the process. So we need to teach the students about how, what gas atomization, what happens if we atomize in nitrogen, what happens if we at atomize in argon, how will that affect the process itself. We also need to teach them about the powder powder properties. We need to look at the PSD of the property, how that's going to affect the effect we get. If there's a slight computation, uh, slight change in the composition of the powder. We need to explain to them that that's actually going to have an impact on the part that they're going to produce at the end of the AM system. We can also incorporate the, new, the normal measurement techniques that we also teach at university. We can in, incorporate uh, scan electron microscope. We can incorporate EDX, DSC. So they know how to measure the properties of these materials that we're going to be putting into the machine. And not only the properties of the materials we're putting into the machine, but all the pro also the properties that we're taking out of the machine itself. But not only do we then teach them about the uh, raw materials going into the machine, but we need to teach them about the properties coming out of the machine. The properties won't be the same as they are as a cast. You can't open up your book and say, well, my 316L has a UTS of 550. Um, it's not going to happen. These materials behave very differently. We need to educate them so that if they go into a company, they say, if the UTS is 450, then yes, we can use additive manufacture, but we need to actually produce the part in this orientation because we have an isotropic behavior from the materials that we're actually getting out of the, the process. We can also look at the material tensile testings, the hardness testings, and also look at fatigue on these parts. So these are all traditionally what we teach within our materials processing mechanical, mechanical engineering programs but we're actually putting an AM spin onto that. We also then look at things such as post-processing and how that can affect the material properties that we get out. If we hip a, a 316L tensile bar, depending, regardless of which orientation it's actually been built in the machine, we get isentropic behavior from it. So these are the sort of things we actually really need to start looking into. Finally, um, our computational side, this is more based on what we're actually doing with our, our doctoral and our postgraduates. And we're getting them to develop models and codes based on discrete elements, FEA, um, and also CFD. It's a very complex process, the AM process. Traditionally, our discrete element models have been based on powder compaction and powder flows through hoppers, as I said originally in the, first, uh, in, in the introduction. But we're getting them to implement them now into actually a, a AM-based uh, system. So we're looking at um, the phase changes we get from a solid to a fluid. So we're actually introducing CFD. We're looking at how the particles interact with each other as they're being pulled across the base. And we're also looking at the uh, starting to get code at macro and micro scales for residual stresses with some of the NHDs. We actually have three NHDs running at the moment. Um, looking at the, the processing uh, of the powder, the residual stresses, and also the control of the process itself. At the bottom here, we can see uh, one of my colleagues looked at, uh, for her NGD, looked at the topolo topological optimization of a ca casing 
which uh, was being worked with with a company to go into an aircraft. Uh, and she was then able to do the topolo topological optimization. She was then able to um, do the FEA analysis based on the material properties we got from the machine rather than those that we got from the book. Um, so that's the sort of work that we're actually going through. So just to finish, the aim of Swansea University, and we're starting this year with our first module in the, uh, the MSc Engineering, we've got a whole module on additive manufacture, is to integrate AM and pass down the research we're doing into the courses we actually deliver. So we're hopefully preparing the engineers for the future so we can get the people going into the company who already know about the process, understand the process, know its limitations and know its advantages so they don't actually need to be taught um, through the company itself. So thank you very much.